In this code demonstration, we're going to take a look at the contains function provided by the underscore JS code library. Now to make use of underscore, you have to make sure that you include a reference to it in your web page like I've done here. I've referenced a popular CDN, but you can also download a copy of underscore to your local project and reference it there from and, re and reference it from there as well. Now, to do the contains, we basically are going to pass in some type of collection and we're going to see if a value or an object exists in that collection. So let's take a look at our array of numbers that we have here. And I'm going to say var result equal to underscore contains. And then I'm going to pass in here my array of numbers. And then I'm going to pass in the number 3. So the number, the number 3 will, will be the value that we're going to check to see if it's contained in the array. And then we'll output the result of that with console.dir. Now let's switch over to our web browser and let's see what the result of this is. It comes back true because 3 is in our list of numbers. Now what if we had put in the number 9? Nine? 9 is not in our list. What would be the result of that? If we reload, we now see that the result is false. So basically you can use contains to see if a, uh, a value is in an array. But how about an array of objects? How does that work? Well. If I were to come in here and actually specify an object like this, so we'll say red, you might look at this and think, oh, okay, we have a red object here. We have an object with a property called color with a value of red here. And we have the same thing up here, so contains will probably find it. Let's actually copy down our widgets variable into here. You might look at that and think, oh, okay, well, we'll find that particular object in the array. If we switch over to our web browser, the result might surprise us a little bit. It doesn't find it. The reason is, is that contains does not actually compare the properties or the contents of an object to another object and see if all the contents equal up. Instead, it looks at memory references. And even though to the human eye, these two objects look the same, to a computer, they're actually two different objects that point to two different locations in memory. So instead, we could do something like this. We can copy this object right here, and we'll say var red equal to this. And then we'll simply come in here and replace this object with our variable called red. And then we'll come down here and replace this with our variable called red. And now when we run this, we'll see that it'll come back and say that it is actually in the array. So now we get true. So the one really cool thing additionally about the contains object or the contains function is that if you are using a, an array with a simple list of values, it does make use of, um, of the index of function that's built into JavaScript. So you definitely get that performance advantage. Well, as you can see, the contains function definitely makes looking for things in an array. Um, much easier and then allows you to take action based upon whether or not that item is in the array.